welcome. Here we go. It's that time again. Matt Connerton unleashed, and we are live from the studios of WMNH 95.3 FM in downtown Manchester, New Hampshire. Also on Comcast 97, if you're in Manchester, streaming at WMNHradio.org. And, of course, on the Facebook, on the Matt Connerton Unleashed Facebook page. And hello to our friends at Raw Talk Online and Tomorrow Radio. Today is Tuesday, August 24th, 2021. Uh, welcome, one and all. Uh, opening with a couple of uh, Rolling Stones uh, songs today, because if you didn't hear, uh, Charlie Watts, the drummer for the entire tenure of the band uh, of the Rolling Stones, uh, passed away a couple hours ago. It was announced uh, within the last couple of hours at age 80. Um, I kind of wondered what was going on with him because he had pulled out of the tour uh, that they were doing or they are on now. Um, and it was uh, supposed to just be a temporary thing. I think they said he was at the time. They said he was, you know, going to lay low for six months for an unspecified emergency surgery that he was having and whatnot. So I don't know if it was cancer or what, but then the news broke today uh, that, uh, he had passed away. So, uh, very, uh, very sad about that. So, you know, the Rolling Stones, um, not, and, and I mentioned this in a Facebook post I put up a little bit ago, not an overtly political band, certainly, but they have some songs that are, uh, that, you know, have a, a little bit of a political bent to them. Uh, the first one I played high wire, that's kind of a forgotten song. Um, I, I think probably, uh, you know, casual Rolling Stones fans, if you mention High Wire to them, they don't even remember it. Obviously, um, more uh, more dedicated fans do. But High Wire was part of a Greatest Hits collection that came out right when the first Gulf War, we were uh, ramping up to go in during the uh, George H.W. Bush administration. Uh, we were getting ready to go in and kick Saddam Hussein, kick Iraq out of Kuwait. And that's when that song came out, and it's it's pretty obvious, uh, you know, Jagger takes in, uh, taking some shots at the military industrial complex uh, in that song, and that that may be their most overtly uh, political song. It's pretty obvious, you know. There's no innuendo there. Uh, the message is clear. It's it's an anti-war song, and really uh, questioning the geopolitics around war and the profit motive around war. And uh, so, but it was, you know, it was a, kind of a minor hit song at the time that it came out. But I don't know if they ever played it live or anything. It's kind of a forgotten, uh, a, a forgotten gem, in in my opinion. I've always loved that song. I loved it when it came out, and uh, I still love it today. Uh, so I opened with that, and I also played Hang Fire, which is much, much more subtly uh, political, but there is a, a political message uh, with that, too. Uh, apparently, when Jagger had written that, um, and that's always been a favorite of mine, too. A uh, very short song. It's only, like, 2 minutes and 12 seconds. How long is that? I already cleared it, cleared it out. It's a very short song. But um, when Jagger had written that, it was um, it, it's actually about some of the, the politics uh, that were going on in the U.K. at the time. But I, I didn't know that until really just a couple of years ago when one day I happened to be reading about um, Rolling Stones songs that had a political bent to them. And I had no idea that that song, I, I never even knew what that meant, Hang Fire. Uh, but then I learned. Uh, so, you know, I, I won't get into all of that, and I probably couldn't explain it correctly anyway because I don't remember all the details. But it had to do with um, some of the politics uh, going on in the UK at the time that uh, Mick Jagger wrote the lyrics for that, or him and uh, Keith wrote that together, Keith Richards, um, as as most of the uh, Rolling Stones songs are. Um, and uh, you know, I'll probably play. You know, there's a couple others that are uh, kind of political. Uh, Undercover of the night. I'll probably play that at the break at the top of the hour. That's another one of my favorites uh, from the uh, 1980s. Uh, that's about the political situation in South America at the time. Um, great, great song. I always love that. And it's um, it's a little different for for the Stones. Not not much different because. You know, even when the Rolling Stones, even when they segued or segued, as John Hopwood would say, into disco uh, briefly with songs like Emotional Rescue and Miss You, uh, they always sounded like the Stones, just kind of different sides of the Stones. But Undercover was kind of a little bit of a little bit of a harder, harder edge 
uh, for them. But uh, so I'll, I'll probably play that at the top of the hour. And Mike Sutterth will be here for his Tweakonomics uh, segment. So if he gets here before I go to break, I'll ask him if he has a favorite Stones song that he would like to hear. Um, although uh, if he says Angie, I will overrule him because I hate that song. Anyway, God, that song is depressing, Angie. I'm not saying it's a, a it's not a great song. I just oh god, I, I could I could never stand it. You know, I mean, I almost uh, want to blow my own brains out by the time you get to the end of it. Anyway, <laughs> but very sad, uh, very sad about the passing of uh, Charlie Watts today. So, and uh, that was a surprise. Um, is it in poor taste to say I always assumed uh, it would be uh, Keith? Would be I, I don't know. I did see a meme the other day. It said, uh, uh, what was it? Oh, for every cigarette you smoke. I think it, it, it was someone who listens to the, the show had posted it. Uh, for every cigarette you smoke, an hour is taken away from your life and given to Keith Richards. Anyway. Uh, if you'd like to call in today, 603-250-6007 is the number. 603-250-6007. You can also text us at 617-917-4476. Tweet me at Matt Connerton or send an email to Matt at MattConnerton.com. And, of course, you can always interact and opine in the Facebook live chat. But the best thing to do so that we can hear and enjoy your dulcet tones is to call us at 603-250-6007. I do want to remind you, we are sponsored by the Hop Knot in the Brady Sullivan right across the street. Don't go there today because Monday and Tuesday is their weekend, uh, but they are open Wednesday through Sunday, so they'll be open tomorrow. But they do have delicious gourmet pretzels. They have craft beer. They have wine. Uh, I think Bill Cini is off again this Thursday. They usually have trivia night on Thursday nights, but it's, from what I understand, that will be returning next Thursday. But Friday nights, they have live music. Mr. Grant Lampton uh, performing live at the Hop Knot. Um, they've got uh, all kinds of events that go on there. So uh, I know there's another Gender Blender event coming up. Uh, they've got the small business thing. Uh, I forget when that's happening. I don't have it in front of me. I should have had it pulled up. I apologize. But anyway... Um, but we, we are, uh, so pleased to have them as a sponsor, great food, great service, and a wonderful family that owns and operates it. And thank all of you for continuing to support our wonderful sponsor, the hop knot in the Brady Sullivan at 1000 Elm street, right across the street, or the hop knot on Elm, which is actually what it is on paper. Technically. I always forget that. I forget to mention the on Elm. I said to Kenny once, I said, uh, should I be including the on Elm part when I talk about you, uh, on the show and, he was kind of like, well, it, it's, it doesn't really matter either way. So people know we're on Elm Street. So there you go. Uh, let's see. We'll uh, take a moment and say hello to everybody in the Facebook live chat. Uh, Wayne Noel, a top fan all the way from Michigan, says uh, good afternoon. Uh, Ricky Litwinkowicz from New York City. Uh, joins us, uh, says, uh, just wanted to say what's up before I go on air. Ricky, of course, uh, does his own show called uh, Pain Train Pipe Bomb. Uh, Jenny, of course, in the chat room. Hello. Uh, Dirk Don of Arrogant Media says, Matt, I need to know how to fax my MP3 file to you. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, you don't have to uh, fax it. You can actually attach it uh, to an email. But uh, yeah, yeah. Good old Crazy Joe. He was supposed to call yesterday, and he never did. He never did. So maybe the Crazy Joe saga finally is over. Maybe he couldn't pay his cell phone bill, and that's why he's been looking for money uh, lately. But uh, Dirk of Arrogant Media, he does do a brand new weekly segment on the show where he reviews a recent new release. Uh, last week was the first one. He reviewed the new Fear Factory album. Uh, this week he's doing Florence and the Machine, and we look forward to that. So... Um, and I don't have a uh, fax machine uh, anyway, uh, Dirk. So we'll we'll have to go with the good old fashioned email. Uh, let's see, or, or Dropbox, or I forget how you send. I think uh, it was a Gmail that you use. I forget. Anyway, that's what I tried to get Crazy Joe to use that night was uh, was Gmail, but uh, it was not to be. Uh, Rocky Huber is in the chat room and says, "What's up, Unleashed family?" Uh, Miriam Banish, who is a top fan, says, "Hello, hello, Miriam." Um. Oh, thank you, Jenny. I'll come back to that. Thank you. Um, 
Jenny just messaged me uh, something. Um, Rocky says, listen, he will get to your MP3 after he pays me for helping his eatings, LOL. I think he meant ratings. Or maybe he meant eatings. I don't usually help other people uh, with their eatings. I uh, I just uh, eat all the uh, food myself, especially if it's pizza. Um. <laughs> Rocky says, listen, he will get to your MP3 after he pays me for helping with his ratings. Uh, he's lucky we don't steal his fans. That's right. Uh, Shannon McGuire is in the uh, chat room. Uh, Shannon says, Monkey Man and Midnight Rambler are two of my favorites by the Stones. Yes, yes. I am particularly fond of Midnight Rambler. Absolutely. Um, Joe Friday is in the chat room and says, Hello, gentlemen. Dirk uh, Dingleimer? Uh, no, it's actually Dirk Don. Uh, at least I think I'm pronouncing it correctly. Don. Dirk Don. Uh, Mike Pelopita, who is a top fan from another one of our wonderful sponsors here at WMNH, Queen City Cabinetry in the historic Sunbeam Mall. Bring your kitchen to life. Uh, Mike Pelopita and Queen City Cabinetry, big supporters of WMNH and all the shows here. Of course, we're also sponsored by CGI Business Solutions, uh, the OG of sponsors. They've been with us from the beginning and most recently Adored Wireless or Adored Wi-Fi, I should say. Uh, Yes, Adored Wi-Fi now operating here in Manchester. Uh, Rocky says... Crazy Joe's mom complained about the phone bill. Her son keeps running up the phone bill by calling out of state to New Hampshire. <laughs> we have a call. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? Hello? That was an immediate click. My goodness. Wow. Somebody's a little bashful. You know what I think happens is, you know, somebody says, oh, I'm going to call the show. And then they call the show and then they get nervous. They're like, oh, I'm on the big time radio show. Ah, and then they panic and hang up. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? Uh, hi, Matt. It's Ron. Uh, <laughs> no, I didn't panic. I just felt like I was interrupting what you were already talking about. Oh, that's and, okay. Um, that's all right. Just, just two things. Two, yes. You know, I've listened to your um, your sponsor's uh, radio advertisement, the one for the Wi-Fi, more than once. Mm-hmm. And the very first time I heard it, I, you know, it was like, it was like, eh. But now I like it. I think it's got to it's gotta catch. It uh, makes you think, so... Mm-hmm. Kudos to that. The guy did a good job. And two, here's a Rolling Stone song nobody ever talks about or ever heard. Do you ever remember the song, or have you ever heard the song called Short and Curly? No. Yeah, she's got your name. She's got your number. She's got you by the, you know what? And oh. they're talking about Short and Curly. The, the, you know, I don't. Uh, I guess pubic hair or something like uh, that. But, yeah, yeah, if you ever hear it, Short uh, and Curly. All right. I don't remember. that. Is that an early one? That must be an early one. Yeah, it's got to be wicked early. It never like, gets played anywhere, but uh, I've heard it, and uh, that's got to be it's just a stone song that nobody ever plays. Yeah, that's got to be like that's got to be Brian Jones era, I would think, because I, I have no uh, recollection of that. Oh, it's interesting. I'll have to check that out later. I'll probably check it out after the show. It sounds like it might be a little uh, a little risque for on air. Might be suitable yeah, for. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it could pass. I mean, I haven't heard it in a long time. I don't think it's uh, probably. You know. You, you check it out afterwards, and you'll know what I'm talking about. Might Very be good. Might be more uh, suitable for Matt Connors and Unsheathed. But all right, thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you for the call, Ron. Okay. All right, bye take guy. care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, that was our friend Ron, and that opens up a line for you, 603-250-6007. 603-250-6007 is the numbre. Yep, Rocky says, no more out-of-state calling for Crazy Joe. Crazy Joe, I imagine him having one of those, uh, remember the the old, like, uh, MCI had one, I think AT&T had one, the calling cards? Like you, like, you call the number on the card, and then you call the, uh, if you're even, like, one or two days younger than I am, you have no idea what I'm talking about, probably. But, yeah, they had these calling cards, so you could... You could, if you were at a uh, uh, a payphone, remember those? You would call the number on the calling card, and then you could call wherever, and you would just get a bill. Um, let's see. Uh, Joe Friday says Dirk Dingleberry. Uh, no, I believe it's pronounced Don. It's Dirk Don, if I'm not mistaken. 
Uh, but although I could be mistaken, I have wondered if I'm suffering from adult onset dyslexia. Eric Street is a top fan in the chat, says, yes, we need fans for this scorching weather. It is warm today. It's uh, humid. Melanie La Liberty from the great state of Vermont says, what's wrong with people from out of state, Huber? Hmm, yeah, that's a good question there, Rocky. Um, Rocky says, uh, nothing crazy Joe's mom pays for the phone bill, and she isn't paying for out-of-state calls. I don't know. I, I Somehow I doubt that crazy Joe's mom is still with us. I mean, he's, what is he, about 74, I think, and, uh, you know, so his mom's probably like 100. Um. And uh, Joe Friday is wondering if Ron has clothes on. Yeah, that's always uh, that's always an open question uh, with Ron. Uh, so Jenny sent me this. So the um, yeah the small business success event uh, happening at the Hopknot. It is a ticketed event, and that is on Monday, August thirtieth at three thirty. They're usually closed on Mondays, but this is an event. You can get tickets through Eventbrite. And uh, Jenny uh, sent me the link to that event. So that is coming up on Monday, August 30th. Ironically, that's an event I would like to attend, but I can't because uh, I'll be here. It's at 3.30, right before the show. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? Ron, Joe Friday, socks and a T-shirt, but all the windows are closed. I mean, all the curtains are closed. All right, so you've Just got... me and my cats. So you've got the standard uniform. That's correct. Excellent. Excellent. Good to hear. All right, Ron. Stay cool. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> I had a I had a suspicion. Uh Braden Russell is in the chat room and says, uh, where's Hopwood? Uh yeah, I haven't heard from John yet this week. Perhaps we'll see him tomorrow though, because on Wednesdays he's in the building anyway, because he has to be at channel twenty three for uh Ward thirteen with John Hopwood, which airs live Wednesdays at 3 p.m. on Channel 23 locally here in Manchester. And you can watch it online, manchestertv.org. You can can get it there, too. Um, He hasn't always been on at that time, but I remember a couple of years ago, he moved the show. He used to be on in the evening. He moved the show to Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Because as anyone who's ever worked in broadcasting will tell you, Wednesdays at 3 p.m., that's prime time, baby, in television. That's when you want to be. Wednesdays at 3 p.m., you'll get all the, you know, all the nursing home residents as they're getting ready for dinner. Yeah, and, well, that's it, I guess. But, yeah, that's uh, so. But we do post the show, of course, on uh, the YouTube uh, afterward. So there you go, Braden. He he may be here tomorrow. We'll see. <clears throat> we shall see. Um, just uh, so, just briefly, NBCNews.com posted this, and then we'll we'll move on. But uh, Charlie Watts, drummer for the Rolling Stone, dies at eighty. Uh, his publicist said, "Quote: He passed away peacefully in a London hospital earlier today, surrounded by his family." Um, says here, Charlie Watts, the unflappable Rolling Stones drummer who anchored Rock's Ageless Wonders, died in a London hospital today just weeks after bowing out of the group's upcoming tour. He was 80. Uh, His publicist, Bernard Doherty, said in a statement posted on the group's Twitter page, quote, it is with immense sadness that we announce the death of our beloved Charlie Watts, unquote. Uh, The publicist added, quote, he passed away peacefully in a London hospital earlier today, surrounded by his family. Charlie was a cherished husband, father and grandfather, and also as a member of the Rolling Stones, one of the greatest drummers of his generation, unquote. Many U.S. fans last saw Watts on their television sets April 18 of 2020 in the depths of the world's struggle against the coronavirus pandemic during the global citizen fundraiser concert, one world together at home broadcast on major us networks, Watts and his bandmates, Mick Jagger, Keith Richards, and Ronnie Wood delighted viewers with a stay at home version of you can't always get what you want. A casually dressed Watts donned headphones and happily air drummed in what appeared to be his living room. Earlier this month, the group announced that Watts would miss its upcoming U.S. tour uh, to allow him to heal from an unspecified medical procedure. At the time, a representative uh, for Watts said the procedure was completely successful. Watts said in a statement on August 4th, quote, 
For once, my timing has been a little off. I'm working hard to get fully fit, but I have today accepted on the advice of the experts that this will take a while, unquote. Uh, The No Filter Tour, which was postponed due to the pandemic, is set to resume September 26th in St. Louis. Um, You know, and obviously uh, it'll be interesting to see who... Um, who they bring in as, you know, obviously an unofficial uh, replacement. replacement. Hi, welcome to Matt Hi, Connerton welcome. Unleashed. Who's this? Unleashed. I'm through this shit, man. We're the top with it. Huh? Huh? I said, where is Hawkwood? Oh. Yeah, I hit the dump oh, button on your yeah, first uh, statement because I you said uh, something that sounded like a bad word. Um, I'm getting. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of feedback. I think he'll be here. To, I think he'll be here tomorrow. I think he'll be here tomorrow. Where is he? I think he'll be here tomorrow. I said, where is Hawkwood? I think he'll be here tomorrow. He's not here today. <laughs> oh, shit. I, I think he'll be here tomorrow. That's bullshit. Oh, okay. All right, I, I have to hang up. You can't swear on FM even with a funny voice. Okay, got to go. <laughs> I don't know if anyone could even tell what he was saying because it was kind of muffled, but uh, it sounded like a bad word. You can't swear on the FM. It still ends up on the podcast, but we can't have, you know, the seven dirty words. Although some of those dirty words you can actually get away with now, but then there's other words that were not included in George Carlin's seven dirty words that are verboten. It's an ever-changing thing. All right. Uh, Charles Richardson is in the chat room and says, can't swear, naughty, naughty. Ooh, that's my favorite John Parr song. You know, John Parr, everyone loves uh, the St. Elmo's Fire song there, Man in Motion. I'm a big fan of naughty, naughty. My dad likes that song, too. Uh... Braden Russell is in the uh, chat room and says, uh, we want hop wood. We are the hop gone wild. <laughs> Whoa. I think Braden might be a Skid Row fan. Well done. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? I want hop wood. Da, 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 da. I want hop wood. Da, 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 da. Who loves a guy who's short and sweet? Dun, 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 dun. Hey, well, how, what's going, Matt? It's Brandon from Portland, Maine. Brandon from Portland, Maine. How are you doing? Well, as the previous caller uh, stated, we need John Hopwood. Where do you think he is today? Today, I, you know, he's probably at the beach getting some sun. It's a beautiful day here in New Hampshire. What, what else do you think he does when he goes to the beach? That's a good question. You know what? I actually imagine him kind of uh, uh, patrolling the beach with one of those metal detectors and trying to find change. That just seems like something he would do. And I have a very clear, it's almost like a psychic image of him doing exactly that. Well, I- I'm thinking more towards the uh, perverted end of things, if you know what oh, I mean. Oh, I don't know. Now, John Hopwood is a man of great character and morals. And, uh, but yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. He, so he's, he's someone you would put uh, as the head logo of your restaurant, right? <laughs> well, if, if I were in fact, well, the logo now that's, that, that actually is a There great... is going to be a petition soon to put Hopwood on the, on the face as the face of the hop knot. So put Hopwood's face where the O is. It's it, as Triple H would say. It's what's best for business. I agree. Well, Triple H, you know, he's a New Hampshire guy, so I have to agree. I think that's a great that's idea. Right. It, it obviously it would be best for business. I mean, if you walk into a restaurant and see a seventy-something-year-old man, that I, I think that breeds positive feelings. Well, maybe now I wonder if someone who's good at graphics is working on something like that as we speak. Oh. I'm wondering. I don't a know. Hopwood a Hopwood restaurant logo. I'm not I'm not hinting at anything because I don't know. I'm just wondering if that has occurred to anyone to actually do that. Um and I suspect that it has, but I don't know that it has. Well, definitely, but uh when's the last time Hopwood was on? 
Oh, that was last Wednesday, I think, right? Yeah, I think it was last Wednesday. Oh, oh, did we miss him or did we call in that day? Somebody called in. Yeah, you called in. You called in. Remember, he was quizzing you. Was that last Wednesday or the week before? Uh, was that the day? Yeah, was that the day he examined me as yes. to whether I am from Portland or not? Yes, he seemed skeptical. He seemed skeptical that you were from Portland, Maine, because there are other Portlands. Yeah, I'm, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, again, like I say uh, now, I, I'm from a Portland near you. A Portland near me. Hmm. Uh, ne- yeah, near anyone listening to this. Oh, near any, right, right. So for anyone listening to the show, it's kind of, uh, you know, you're, uh, yeah, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Well, you, yeah, you have some out-of-staters listening, right? Oh, of course. We have a lot of people who listen online from all over, not just out-of-state, even out-of-country. Oh. Mm-hmm. International. Well, what's your second What's your second most watched country, do you think? What do you think? Well, I know we have, uh, you know what, I'm going to guess and say Canada. Oh, why, why is that? I, I, don't, I don't know. I think the, the Canadians, well... One thing is, for certain, uh, there's a lot of Canadians who are fascinated by American politics and uh, probably view America, uh, politically speaking, as uh, sort of the, um, you know, the, the, the bowl of the uh, toilet. So, uh, so I suspect we have a lot of uh, people in Canada. That's a great analogy. And, but I'd also say that there, there's, another, there's another attribute that Canadians have, and that's I, I think a fondness, an over fondness for a certain hot wood. Yes. Now that is interesting. Would you say that? Uh, Isn't that a Canadian? That's a Canadian tendency. What to pronounce the word attribute? Attribute? Or oh. attribute? Or how did you say it? You said it's strange. Oh no! Is a tribute the British way? <laughs> I'm not even. I'm. I'm actually not sure. Uh, but uh, would you say that uh, Hopwood is, in your estimation, a uh, a Canadian phenomenon? Well, I, I'd say so. Even though he sounds, he kind of sounds like he's from Boston. Yeah, he does. He sounds like he's from Boston by way of California. It's very confusing. But would you say that John Hopwood is to Canada what David Hasselhoff is to Germany? A hundred percent. I was hoping you'd say that because I was kind of going out on a limb on that one. All right, good. Yeah. And, and yeah, so why is Mr. Hopwood so reclusive these days? You know, like I've said, he's very mercurial. He's mysterious. He uh, sometimes... Sometimes I'll hear from him multiple times a week. Sometimes a week will go by. I don't hear from him at all. You just never know. And I think he likes it that way. I think he likes to be very stealth so he can uh, he can surprise you. Sometimes he'll walk in the room. I don't even know he's going to be here at all. He doesn't even tell me out of time. Well, yeah, we're going to need to put out an all-points bulletin for him. Well, we don't know that he's actually missing. Oh, that's right. Mm. We have, no one's checked his home. Right, right. Well, it's too well, bad he doesn't well, live is, in Portland. Is, so is Mr. Hopwood really a ladies' man? We've got to get to the bottom of this. Well, what do you think? I mean, he's pretty oh, suave. he claims to be. He's a self-purported. Yes, yes. Well, there's very little tangible evidence available. <laughs> I would imagine him doing well with the ladies because he's, uh, I've seen him be quite charming. I think he's probably in the right set of circumstances a silver-tongued devil and i think he probably he mentioned does well which woman did he mention nikki or well oh nikki is a uh, a former co-host of his on his television show oh is she in his age range or no definitely not that's what i thought yeah well, he's significantly younger than him right yeah yeah he's uh well, well, what's the rule? The rule is half your age plus seven. So uh, maybe maybe she's old enough. I don't know. But she's married, and I think she moved away. And I think she's uh, now in, uh, you might see her around Portland, from what I hear. Exactly, exactly. The, yeah, the words around the town. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, the word around town from a Portland. 
Yes. We don't know which Portland. And there are many. Probably a Portland uh, near me. That's right. And, yeah, there are Portland. There's certain Portlands that have more of a, of a club scene than other ones. Oh, yes, no doubt. You, you know, there isn't really a big club scene in Portland, Iowa. I find that shocking. Well, what is there there? Just like a lot of corn? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of corn. Uh, there's um, there's there's a lot of flat land. Uh-huh. Uh huh. There there's uh well they don't really have a sports team. Uh, I don't really know. Oh, oh, it sounds like kind of. A... I mean, they play. I know they play. A, they play a variety of sports in Iowa, but I, they don't really have a dedicated sports team. I guess they have some minor hockey teams. Oh wow, minor hockey teams. Oh. Yeah, like uh, yeah, maybe the minor league, the feeder league for the NHL, I believe. No, yeah, I'm not a sports guy. I don't know how any of that works. Oh well, have you been to Iowa? I have not actually been to Iowa. I would like to go. I would like to go when the Iowa caucus is happening. I think that would be very exciting. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I've, I've heard so. <laughs> yes. That'd probably be about the only time I would go to Iowa, just like uh, during the primary is about the only time uh, some people would come to New Hampshire. Yeah, is New Hampshire a lot more busy uh, during the primary year or no? Yes, yes. It's a big deal. It's, it's you know, the one time every four years the rest of the country remembers we're here. Exactly. Since Yeah, other than that, New Hampshire is very uh, mundane. Yeah, I don't know if I'd say I don't know if I'd say it's mundane. I mean, I, I like it here, obviously, but uh, well, compared compared to some of your close neighbors, mm. everything up 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 above New York is kind of overshadowed. <laughs> I suppose it is. Yes, I suppose it is. And and all of the states, like all, they're all contiguous. Like Connecticut is not that different from Vermont, which isn't that different from Maine, which you know. Yeah. I mean, different politically because Vermont and Connecticut and Massachusetts are all much more liberal, I'd say, than New Hampshire. Um, I mean, New Hampshire ends up being a blue state during the presidential elections, but um, New Hampshire and Maine are more conservative politically than the other New England states. Yeah, I, but... haven't, I haven't checked why that is. Is that? Do you think it's because there's less, I always look at the education rates, are they lower in New Hampshire than in, in Massachusetts? That's a good question. I actually don't know. Like, I mean, bachelor's degrees and math, master's degrees and stuff like that. Good question. I don't know. Um, I do know that, you know, I grew up here and when I was a kid, New Hampshire was very conservative. And then over time, and people attribute this to the, um, you know, an influx of people moving from states like Massachusetts. You know, the state got more and more, uh, I don't want to say liberal, but but less less conservative than we used to be. Certainly. Um, like I said, I don't think we've gone I don't think we've gone Republican in a presidential election since 2000. So um, so the state has changed and we've somewhat sort of uh, assimilated into the rest of the Northeast. But I don't know. And I, I do know that younger people and this might be part of it. Um, a lot of people who graduate high school or graduate college here in New Hampshire, they take off afterward and move move away. So that might be part of it because younger people tend to be more liberal and older people tend to be more conservative. Um, maybe that's part of the reason. I don't know. I really don't know. That would know. definitely make that would make sense because Massachusetts is obviously young, MIT, mm-hmm. all of those technology stuff, a lot of young people there. Right. And that would make sense that New Hampshire would – and that would make uh, also make sense because old people have been historically Republican. Right. Right. Yeah. So that might be a reason. That might be a reason. Uh, yeah, and and you were saying like it was New Hampshire. Did it used to be more agrarian or agrarian? Uh, oh God, what, what does that mean, Brandon? I, I've heard the was word. There more farm? Was it more like farming? Was, was there oh. more primitive jobs? Um, I don't know. Back when you were growing up, like you know, I don't. Yeah, honestly, I don't really remember. Um, I can Has tell there you. Has been a shift in the type of jobs or no? I don't know. I'm not sure. Right now, I can tell you, like here in Manchester, where we are, we have a lot of tech here. Um, and actually, and also on in the Seacoast area, like in Portsmouth and whatnot, 
But I don't remember if we had a lot of tech here when I was a kid. I guess I never noticed growing up. So that's a good question. I I suspect that there has been a shift, but um, in fact, more than suspect, there probably has, but I, I can't say definitively that there has been, but probably. And uh, yeah, and uh, so, Man- so you're saying Manchester is the tech hub of uh, New Hampshire? I would say so, yeah. Yeah, we have a lot of tech here. And is Manchester, is Manchester the biggest city in New Hampshire or no? Yes, yes. It's not. So it's bigger than. Uh, is there Bedford, Concord? Yeah, Manchester is the biggest city in New Hampshire. Concord is our capital, but Manchester is the, lo- the largest city. We we have about uh, I think a hundred twenty thousand. So it's not huge. It's not you know it's not a metropolis, but by any stretch, but it is the largest city in New Hampshire. I'm just going to. Ch- I'm just checking out uh, how uh, how you guys voted in the. Uh in the democratic primary. Oh, we went for, uh, we went for Bernie, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Yeah. You guys definitely did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think both times. Oh, wait, no. Uh, yeah, we went for Bernie in 2020 in 2016. I think it was about even, it was a, a statistical tie, but they figured out how to make sure that Hillary, left with more delegates than bernie <laughs> ah. yeah they they figured out how to make that make sure of that <laughs> well it was it was nine it was nine to 15 but the super you're, yeah you're the super delegate yeah 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 were, uh, yeah yeah there were what six or six or seven of them they, uh, oh yes manchester so manchester city there were twenty thousand votes and sanders won by over 10 points over Buttigieg. okay right so that was a pretty significant win Yes, yes. Yeah. And well, that's probably one of the reasons why he narrowly he only won by about four thousand votes statewide. So Yeah. Um yeah, a lot of enthusiasm for Bernie here. Both times. A lot of enthusiasm for Bernie. But of course, you know, he's kind of got favorite son status here too, because Vermont's right next door. So Exactly. He does better in the border county. Yes. Yeah. Uh but it, ju- like uh judging by uh the cast on on your show manchester seems like maybe an older city oh well i intend so, yeah but I, that's not the real vibe there um well i intentionally surround myself with uh people who are older uh because it makes me feel young and vibrant oh yeah like i like when john hopwood uh, walks into the room, you know, and and maybe he's having a day where he's not feeling so good, i immediately feel 10 years younger because it's like, oh, well, at least I'm not that guy. Well, but but what about like the way the way Hopwood dresses though? Hmm. Isn't it intimidating? I mean, he always looks so pristine. That is true. He's quite fastidious. Well, you know, uh he has to be to be the uh, you know, to continue to attract the ladies and the Canadians. I'm sure there are quite a few transplants there, or maybe a couple. People who've moved here from Canada to get close to Hopwood, yeah. you mean? Oh, well, of course. I'm I'm sure there are. I I mean So yeah, but you have you ever met a Canadian there? No? Oh, of course. Oh. Yeah, they actually uh there's uh I've I've long read and seen and heard stories of uh Canadians just uh Coming right over the border. Apparently, there's a lot of Canadians who enter the uh, United States illegally through the uh, through the border here uh, because we uh, New Hampshire borders Canada. But no one ever uh, seems to be that bothered by it. Not uh, not like with the, uh, the, you know, the southern border of the United States. I've never I mean, I've never quite figured out why. I mean, I I wonder why. Yeah, I mean, I have have a theory or two or three, but uh, yeah, a bunch of pasty, a bunch of pasty (laughs) European white people come into the border and uh, they blend right in well that's true yeah uh no one's being asked uh for their uh for their papers shall we say yeah you might be on right. something there brandon that might be the reason that might be the reason also drive the same the drive the same vehicle mm. yeah 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 but I, I didn't i didn't realize that I, i've heard other parts of the border are a little more tightly uh guarded like even places like minnesota Minnesota? 
Yeah, I've heard there's at least some screening and some security at the border. Oh, there. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I didn't, I didn't realize New Hampshire was so willy nilly. Well, I yeah, I just uh, I don't know how willy nilly it is, but I've just I know that there's a lot of you always hear about smugglers, people bringing things into the country illegally through the Canadian border, but uh, but. Uh, Whatever. I mean, it's just a bunch of Canadians I mean, coming back and they, forth. What are they smuggling over? Prescription drugs? Oh, uh, probably. Yes. Depends <laughs> how cheap they are. I probably. Yeah, prescription drugs and uh, tobacco products. I mean, I've and... heard of I've heard of Canadians going on alcohol sprees and trying to smuggle it back into the Canada because it's cheaper in the U.S. But oh, I didn't know that alcohol's cheaper here. Yeah, because in Canada, the the uh, there's a liquor board. Uh, in each province, so oh. there's a tax. Oh, okay, okay. I didn't know that. I didn't know, uh, but that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, so it's like- stuff like if you're if you're into like uh, uh, spirits and imports and stuff like that, you're much better to go buy it in the U.S. and try to smuggle it through the customs back. Uh huh. Uh huh. Well, see, that's what I'm talking about. All this illegal activity at our border with Canada. And, and, but who's who's up there? I mean, why is it the National Guard up there? Uh, you know, uh, trying to prevent all of this. The, the Royal mean, Mounties. The, yeah, somebody's got to be. I mean, you know, it's a next thing you know. I mean, it's it's anarchy uh, up there. We're gonna have all these. Uh, next thing you know, we're gonna have a bunch of. You know what's gonna happen, Brandon? We're gonna have a bunch of Canadians coming in here trying to take our jobs. And they're going to be trying to rape women and uh, sell drugs. Well, yes, I yes, I'll tell you. But uh, yeah, but nobody's that concerned, I guess. So you know, whatever. Well, no, and I think that Canada <laughs> doesn't mind Americans coming over uh, either, because we have a couple of uh, uh, cities on the border that rely on tourism for all their income. Oh yes, no doubt, of course, of like course. Uh, Niagara Falls. Oh, I've been there. Yep. Yep. Oh, you have you been to the Canadian side? Yes. Long time ago. Oh, but wow. yes. Oh yeah. I've been to Canada. Well, oh, really? Oh, I've been to Canada, yeah. I haven't been to Portland in Canada, if there's I, a Portland. I, I, I forgot Canada. where New Hampshire borders. <laughs> uh is that New Brunswick or Yeah, I've been to um the one time that I, I went to Niagara Falls, yeah, we, we went there through the United States. We went uh, through Vermont into New York and then up to Niagara Falls. But then at Niagara Falls, we crossed into Canada. And it was a long time ago, so I don't remember what was on the other side other than Niagara Falls because we were taking kind of a rural... We were going to Chicago, but we went up through Canada. I see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, so you haven't, been, uh, you haven't been to Toronto? No, no, I have not. Uh, hmm. Well, uh, where else have you ventured in the U.S.? Have you been to any of the big cities? Or yes, I've been to. Uh, well, I've been to Portland, Maine, but I've not been to uh, Portland, Oregon, or uh, Portland, Iowa. Well, it doesn't sound like Portland, Iowa is a very big city. Where have you been in the U.S., Brandon? Oh, I've only ventured into uh, <laughs> New York State. Oh, okay. Uh, only upstate uh, mm-hmm. where nothing happens. Right, right. I mean, it's it's pretty calm up in upstate New York. It's very docile. Yes. Oh, I've, you know, there you see I've an Applebee's and a Dunkin' Donuts. And that's about it. Right. Well, that's what they're known for, upstate New York. Applebee's and Dunkins. It's just called Dunkin' now, actually. Well, uh, you know, you know, it's a it's a buzzing town when the Applebee's is the busiest place. Right. I like Applebee's. You like Applebee's? I like Applebee's. Jenny and I went there once and got hamburgers, and they were amazing. I, I know, I know. Apple, I, I don't know why exactly, because there isn't that many Applebee's where I am. But uh, Applebee's is the butt of uh, many jokes. Is it really? Oh, yeah, yeah. Because like, it's a very like sort of uh, uh, stripped down, like it's it's for kids. It's very sort of PG, I guess. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I like Applebee's. What do you order there? Uh, I don't remember what Jenny got, but the last time we went there, and it was the first time I'd been there in a long time, but I, I got a hamburger, and the quality of the meat was quite remarkable. Oh, really? It was quite good. 
Wow, for a chain place, that that sounds impressive. It was impressive. Oh, so th- so there are some there's some happening spots in Manchester to eat and uh, have fun and there is socialize. You got the Hop Knot and you've got Applebee's. No, actually, we have we have a lot of really good restaurants here. That's um that's one of the nice things about this city. There's a lot of good places to eat. Um, right here on and Elm is, it, is Manchester the kind of city with a nice main street where you can just walk around and kind of visit different stores, or is it you got to kind of drive around to get places? Oh no, uh, Elm Street. Uh, Manchester is odd this way. Our main street is not called Main Street; it's called Elm Street, and there is a main street, but it's this other street. But our main street, which is Elm Street, is um, is is nice, and yeah, you can walk around downtown and. You can walk over to the Hop Knot. You can walk somewhere else, and yep, everything's uh, down here. It's it's really uh, yeah, it's it's nice, very nice, and it holds the distinction of being the longest dead end street. That's a dead end at both ends. The longest uh, double dead end street in the entire country is Elm Street oh my in goodness. Manchester. Yep, yep. Kind of how long does it go for? Yeah, it's miles. I don't know. I don't know how long. I have a limited concept of that, but yeah, it's the longest dead end street in the uh, entire country. Wow, well, uh, this is a great conversation. I'll let you have a couple minutes at the end, uh, but uh, thanks for taking my call. <laughs> All right, Brandon from Portland. Anytime, my friend. Nice to hear from you, and we'll try to get you some hopwood tomorrow. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you. Really, yeah, make an effort. We need some hopwood. All right, we'll do. We'll we'll do our best. All right, bye bye. <laughs> Brandon from Portland always hangs up very abruptly at the end. Oh, like uh, someone else I know. Well, always nice to talk to Brandon from Portland. I appreciate his curiosity about the city of Manchester. Um, and uh, wow, we have another call. John Hopwood is a sex symbol in Canada. Can you believe that? Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? Uh, Charles, what's going on? Everybody? Charles Richardson from the Charles Richardson Show. How are you, my friend? I'm doing good. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what's all this talk about wood and why is it hop wood? I mean, is that so, is that like a new type of erectile dysfunction medicine or something? Oh, I don't believe so. Uh, no, I think uh, John Hopwood. Now his name is um, he's of British descent, I believe. His like in in uh, merry old England. The Hopwoods go back for generations. I think he's like a eighth cousin to Princess Di or something. Uh, next time he's on, he can explain all about his name. It's it's uh, quite a story, and and he loves to talk about it. He loves to talk. Oh, that's a that's a very very boring story. Um, yes, I, I wish him well though. Yes, yes. Well, we all do. I but, hope he's here tomorrow, and so does uh, Braden, and so does Brandon from Portland. Yeah, it seems like everybody's getting a hard on for wood. I don't understand why. Oh uh, yeah, I don't know if we can use that but, word, but um, that right. wasn't something that you had to dump, did you? I, I yeah, I hit yeah, I did hit the dump on that. Oh, I God, have uh, you, you have to. Un- it's okay, Charles. That's why we're on a delay. You see, you have to understand. I don't know if you've heard me uh, explain this. But every once in a while, someone will ask me, Matt, what is your objective? What is your goal that you're trying to accomplish with your show? And I tell everyone, my primary goal with this show is to come in here every day from 4 to 6 p.m. and spend two hours not getting fired. That's my goal. Ooh. So far, so good. Had a couple suspensions along the way, but I have not been relieved of my duties as of yet. Well, that's good. I don't want to be the the one to do that. Well, so, no, like uh, I said, I uh, uh, honestly, you know, throwing throwing fun at Hobwood. We're on a we're on um, a d- delay. Actually, so, yeah. I, I actually wanted to talk to you because I didn't listen to the show Monday. So, if you covered this, I apologize. Okay. But what are your thoughts of CM Punk making his return to AEW, and also Becky Lynch and Brock Lesnar making their their return to SummerSlam? Mm. Yes. Well. Uh, CM Punk uh, returning to AEW. Jenny and I watched that and really enjoyed it. And uh, I think it's great. And apparently they pulled a very big rating uh, for a show that airs uh, on cable on a Friday night at 10 o'clock. I was reading today they pulled a very big rating. I think it's great. Uh, I was uh, very happy to see that. That was probably one of the loudest, if not the loudest crowd reactions I've ever heard when his music hit and he came out. I thought that was very cool. 
Um, I have not seen any of, because to me, WWE is kind of stale, so I'm these days much more interested in AEW. But um, but I, yep. think it, I think it's cool that Brock Lesnar came back, and I'm, I am intrigued to see what the storyline is going to be, because obviously um, him coming back and staring down Roman Reigns and uh, Paul Heyman is going to be kind of caught in the middle here. I think that'll be very interesting to see where they go with that. Um, and the Becky Lynch thing, like I said, I haven't seen any of this, but Becky Lynch coming back, that's great and all. And I, I strongly suspect that the reason they brought back Brock Lesnar and Becky Lynch on the same night was they were sort of trying to, um, it was a, a response in a way to, uh, AEW bringing in CM Punk. Um, yeah. so they wanted to do something big or they would have saved one of them for another time. But I, I don't like, from what I understand, they brought Becky Lynch in and she had a very quick match, if you can even call it a match, with Bianca Belair and, like, instantly won back the title. And that I don't like because Bianca Belair, and I haven't seen much of her lately because I haven't watched it lately, but I watched her for a couple of years in NXT. Bianca Belair is a star. She's a star. Yeah. And they need to continue to push her to the moon. And having her just lose and... A couple of seconds to Becky Lynch, I think, is kind of bizarre, and I don't, I don't really understand why they did that. But uh, those are my thoughts. But I'm, yeah. I'm most excited about CM Punk. Yeah, I'm actually curious to see CM Punk because when he went ahead and made his speech, you know, he did throw a couple of jabs at WWE, saying he left professional wrestling 16 years ago when he doesn't count WWEs apparently right. is not professional wrestling. So he kind of took a couple of jabs at him and, uh, mm -hmm. and you know, I, I, I think um, I, I'm kind of curious to see how he works with the young talent in his speech to see how heartfelt it was and um, where he goes from there. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, seeing him come back, I wish it was with WWE, but with AEW, that crowd reaction just brought mm. back old times. Like, yeah, that's the pop you want to hear. Oh when yeah. You make a comeback. Oh yeah, that, that was that was amazing. Yeah, I I had uh, chills, and uh, you know Jenny and I watched it on YouTube, um, and uh, <laughs> afterward, you know, it showed up next on the uh, you know the generated playlist on YouTube. So I I also showed her uh, because she had never seen it, you know, because she's she's just a casual fan. She likes it if I bring something to her and I say, hey, we need to watch this match or whatever. She's into it, but um, I showed her from years ago. Uh, when they did that, 2011, the 10 years, when CM Punk, uh, they did that negotiation of his contract with Vince in the ring and talking about the ice cream yeah. bars and all that. That was that was kind of fun. I showed Jenny that. Oh, and that was even better. He ended his speech. Everybody on the way out of the United Center, grab yourself an ice cream bar on me. Yeah. That yeah. was awesome. Yeah, that was cool. That was awesome. Yeah. Well, I wanted, I wanted to get your thoughts on that because uh, it was a very eventful weekend in wrestling. And, and again, if you went over anything on Monday, I apologize to the listeners to uh, ramble on the same stuff over and over. Oh, crazy Joe. Uh, over and over <laughs> and over again. So, Oh, no worries. Um, no but, worries. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, you guys have a great show. Uh, and I'll try to keep listening on along. Hey, uh, Charles, before you go, when what, speaking of Mondays, when do your Mondays begin? See, here's the thing. I haven't really brought it up to everybody else because when I brought it up, that's when that's when Karen went on vacation. Oh. I brought it up to the wife, and uh, she's like, you're going to take another day off, and are you going to take another day and do another show? Really, really, really? I'm thinking, yeah. So yeah. If I had it my way, it would be five days a week. Right. <laughs> I said, you don't have to be a part of it. What I plan on doing, actually, for Monday, is I'm actually trying to go ahead and get just another cast. Oh, okay. Um, because I don't expect Karen to go. She she already drives forty minutes to get there. I'm not paying her. Yeah. So it's it's I don't expect her to do it three days a week. If you know, I'm just grateful she's able to do it too. Right. So I'm actually looking to do like a virtual cast. Like I had a I had two guest hosts on Friday that uh, uh, you know jumped on the the bar and uh, they they said they're willing to you know they're willing to come in when we when I need them. And it's like oh well, let me see if maybe I'll talk to them about Monday and. See what's going on. Monday is just a general idea. I just wanted to see how many of the affiliates I had backed up on it, and so far half of them are on board. Oh, okay, okay. So that's so, still uh... it's still it's still just a broad idea. There's nothing official, and when there is something official, I'll give you guys a couple of weeks ahead of time so 
you can kick whoever's in my spot off. <laughs> right. <laughs> v- <laughs> very cool. Well, go ahead and uh, before you go, Charles, uh, go ahead and give your show a plug. Yeah, uh, I'm going to plug my finger into the electrical socket and give you guys some <laughs> electricity here. Uh, Wednesdays and Fridays, uh, 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time, ipmnation.com, and a bunch of other affiliates. It's the Charles Richardson Show, uncensored, uncut, um, unfriendly. Um, but, yeah, we talk about everything, politics, the news, current events, and we just random BS on, on the air about each other's lives. So yeah. come on in, enjoy the fun, and, uh, you know, jump on in and, and uh, say hi. Very cool. Very cool. All right, Charles, always wonderful to hear from you, my friend. Thank you very much. All right, you got it. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. All right, Charles Richardson of the Charles Richardson Show. Mike Sutterth is here at the news desk. I is. Um, we're going to uh, be taking a, a break in a minute, but, uh, Mike, I'm sure you were uh, saddened uh, by the news of uh, Charlie Watts passing away. Yes, yes, a tough one, man. Um, I think he had, um, he stuck with the Stones, did he not? Um, oh, kind yeah. of through the bitter end here. Well, he... It was, it was the bass player uh, that I think ducked out here, uh, but um, right. we'll talk Bill, about that here in a minute. Go ahead. Bill, Bill Wyman had left, yeah. Yes, sir. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? Hey, Matt. Uh, I just caught the last few minutes of the last caller talking about AEW and WWE. I just want to see what your thoughts are on CM Punk and Darby Allen. Do you know anything about Darby Allen? I do. I've uh, I haven't had as, uh, enough time to really watch over the past few months, but I've seen a little bit of Darby Allen. I think he's amazing. Uh, that, oh, yeah, he's, uh, uh, he's a risk taker. That move that he does, the coffin drop, um, yeah. is impressive and terrifying. And I like seeing him do it because it looks really cool. And I hate seeing him do it because I'm afraid he's literally going to get killed, um, but uh, or paralyzed. But, uh, yeah, he's amazing, and I was surprised to see him and Sting show up during CM Punk's promo like, promo like that in the rafters, but uh, I didn't expect that. That was a little bit of a curve, but it's cool, and I look forward to seeing that match. And uh, I just hope CM Punk goes over because it's his first match back. But uh, Yeah, he, he will. It's in, it's in Chicago. <laughs> yeah, but Darby Allen's a star. Absolutely. Very impressive. Oh, yeah, absolutely. No, as an, as an older guy who's not uh, up on current wrestling here, is uh, is it cooler than the Jimmy Superfly Snooker, who was the he was the man when I was in college? Oh, Jimmy Snuka, yeah, yeah, you know, off the he yeah. would the Superfly. It's, well, so, yeah. So is this coffin flash. drop you're talking about is, is comparable or oh, it's, mo, it's, mo it's much much more impressive and uh, dangerous. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Look it up on YouTube. You'll Will see. Do. You'll see. It's frightening. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, Matt, I gotta ask you: Are you are you gonna buy the pay per view? Or are you gonna watch it? No, uh, no, I don't uh, spend any money oh, on no. on. Uh, I'm not invested enough in it to to spend money on it. Plus, I'm a cheap oh, sob. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Frugal. Frugal. Right, well, yes. Did you uh, did you see SummerSlam this weekend? No, I don't. Uh, oh, the highlights or whatever. I uh, I don't really watch any WWE anymore. Uh, if I do watch something, it's usually AEW. It's pretty rare that WWE to me is very stale. I like AEW. Yeah, it's the, new and the fresh. Main card, the main roster, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, hard to watch. Uh, you know, there was a time yeah, when I would watch Raw and SmackDown and all of it, and I haven't sat through an episode of either of those shows in probably a decade. Yeah, I just, Monday Night Raw is the worst show of all time. Yeah, yeah it's three plus hours of that how do you even sit through that <laughs> you know <laughs> it's a lot it's a lot yeah yeah all right all right well, that's all i want to know about all right thank you for the call all right no problem all right bye-bye <laughs> um yeah but uh yeah uh charlie watts was there to the end um he had uh, i think it was maybe a month ago or maybe more he had announced that he was pulling out Temporarily of the tour mm-hmm. uh, for an undisclosed medical reason. He had to have emergency surgery, but he was going to be back. And then today the news came. He passed away. What a shame. Uh, I, I had a lot of respect for him um, in uh, recent years, and it's probably going back 15 in my old age, I think, recent. He actually had a swing group, uh, his little side project. Oh, he, yeah. he did a swing group, and if you're a musician or a drummer particularly, he played traditionally, which means the left hand held the stick uh, differently than you and I would, uh, you know, yeah. bang on pots and pans as a kid. And uh, that always intrigued me. I had taken some drum lessons as a kid, 
But um, I had a lot of respect for him in that he kind of followed his, of course, he was a Rolling Stone. He always will be, always had been. Uh, but he had done this swing group thing on the side, and I, yeah. I, I thought that was pretty cool. You know? Yeah, I'd, I'd forgotten about that, yeah. And he was always impeccably dressed. Amen. Amen. Yeah, Slick yeah. back hair and uh, dressed nice, and, um, you know, uh, no offense to the late, great Neil Pert, who, uh, you know, there will never be another Neil Pert. Right. But uh, Charlie Watts kind of kept that basic kit going, and when you can drive a band like the Rolling Stones with a basic three- or four-piece kit. Oh, yeah. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, drummers, but uh, that that's pretty cool. Yeah, Absolutely. Pretty, very yeah. cool. Absolutely. So, yeah, it's a sad day. We're going to go to a break. I'm going to play uh, another, uh, you know, like I said earlier, I opened with a High Wire and Hang Fire, a couple of songs that awesome. even though the Rolling Stones never a political band overtly, you know, but they had a few songs, a handful of songs that kind of had a little bit of a political bent. So uh, I'm going to play another uh, favorite of mine as we, as we go to the break, Undercover of the Night, which at the time was uh, when it was released, it was uh, Jagger addressing uh, some of what was going on politically in South America. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of an intense song uh, for the Rolling Stones. Um, but uh, so we're going to play that and show some love to our sponsors. And then when we come back. Uh, we'll have Mike Sutterth, uh, who he is here to do his weekly Tweakonomics segment, which we look forward to. Swing. And uh, so uh, here's a little undercover of the night from the Stones. Uh, rest in peace, Charlie Watts. <laughs> Oh, about seven or eight inches. Everybody, it's hour number two. Matt Connerton unleashed from the studios of WMNH 95.3 FM. Mike Sutterth is here as well, and Hello. we have a call. We'll grab this quickly. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? Hello, Matt Connerton. It's Polly. Polly C from Retro Spectrum Radio with Polly C. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Doing well. I'm sad about Charlie Watts, of course. Yes, yes. So I hear. That's just. Um... Horrible, but you know what? Say what you will about the Rolling Stones, man. Charlie Watts played all the way up until the end, you know? I mean, we just had an episode, you and me and Dan, a few weeks back, where it was um, all lockdown music from 2020, and all these bands got together from their homes and performed their their hits, and uh, we did a Rolling Stones song. We did uh, You Can't Always Get What You Want, and Charlie was there, man, jamming away on his drums all the way up to the end. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, 80 years old. Yeah, yeah, my dad's age. <laughs> oh, no kidding. Wow. Yeah, my dad never listened to the Stones. My dad was into the weirdest music, man. He, You know, he was part of the Stones and Zeppelin and Who Generation, but you know, my dad listened to, like, The Letterman, Sha Na Na, and <laughs> Bobby Fenton. <laughs> really? Oh, my. Yeah. <laughs> That's very retro. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, send out my condolences to the great Charlie Watts. And you played a song that was going to be featured on the show Friday night, but that's okay. Uh, We'll pick out another one. We're doing all night songs this Friday night, you and me and uh, DJ Steve. And uh, Undercover of the Night was going to be in there. But we will go ahead and pick another Stone song. It could still be in there. I don't (laughs) know. What, what? Well, no, I know, but you know, I no, I'd rather pick something else out. Do you have a Do you have a rule that you can't play anything on the show that I've already played on mine during the week? No, it's not. It's not a rule. It's oh. just like an OCD thing, I guess. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. No, I understand. All right. Well, that's fine. Yeah, we like to uh, keep it original over there at our other show there, Maddie. And uh, yes. you know, you you played that song, and now you know it's just now I gotta like say nine Hail Marys and. And, and, and not step on any, cr- on any cracks on the sidewalk for the next three weeks. I've got OCD, man. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to play my sloppy seconds. I understand. I am not going to play <laughs> Matt Cunard in Unleashed Sloppy Seconds. That's correct. The Stolen Thunder show. That's right. <laughs> Stolen Thunder. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah, besides, when they'll be hearing it on Friday night, if I were to play that song, they'd say, somebody out there would say, 
hey, didn't we just hear this on Matt Connerton Unleashed three days ago? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Isn't that always the way? Oh, right. Boy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, very good. So night, right, night music. Did you just say all right? Night Peter? music. Did you, I'm sorry? Did you, did you just say all right, Peter, a minute ago? I don't know. Did I? It sounded like you said all right, Peter. It sounded like you called me Peter. That's if comp- I did, it must have been completely Freudian, if you, mm. if you know what I'm saying. Uh, well, it's I a compliment, do. I guess. I guess so. I guess so. All right. That's right. All right, All right, Peter. Well, you have a good night. <laughs> All right, Polly C. We'll see you Friday. Thank you. All right, brother. See you. All right. Bye-bye. All right, Polly C. from Retro Spectrum Radio with Polly C. every Friday night from 7.30 to 10 p.m. right here uh, from the studios of WMNH 95.3. And it's pretty busy in this uh, little uh, corner of the world on Friday nights because also on Friday nights, our friend Mike Sutterth transforms into Grant Lampton and performs live at our wonderful sponsor, The Hop Knot, in I the Brady trans- Sullivan. I get transmorgified. Transmorgified. Is that a word? <laughs> I, it was in Calvin and Hobbes. That's where I got it from. <laughs> okay. I think that, yeah, I think that is a word. Yes, transmor- Uh Very good. Yes. So you'll be, uh, of course, you are doing a residency there every Friday from 7 to 9? Yes, yes. I'll be there at 7 o'clock. Uh, I normally roll about 7.15 it's a transition period. They have an after work crowd, and then there's an evening crowd. So uh, I kind of help them through that transition. So I've, I've been hitting about seven fifteen, but I have an awful lot of fun over there, and I love Kenny and his family to death, and they, they've been very kind to me. Absolutely, yes. Do you have any other shows that you're doing this week? Uh, I know sometimes you play at the six oh three. I don't have anything lined up uh, in uh, cement at the six oh three. I am talking with uh, your dear friend and colleague Rob Acevedo. Uh, trying to score a show up in Pembroke, New Hampshire, oh. which I, th- I don't know if you've been following his kind of uh, roll forward with Granite State of Mind, but he's had a um, a summer series up there. Yes. And um, I offered my services, and he said he would try to do what he could for me. Oh. Um, and I would like to do that as a duo if that, uh, if Rob, if you're listening, um, I'm waiting on his phone call back. Uh, he, oh, very good. Yeah, he's a good guy. Very good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, let me give the numbers, and then we'll get to Mike's uh, segment. If you'd like to enter the impending discussion, you can call us at 603-250-6007, 603-250-6007. You can also text me at 617-917-4476. Tweet me at Matt Connerton or send an email to Matt at MattConnerton.com. And by the way, Mike Doyle, if you're listening, I did get your email. We'll uh, we'll get to that later in the week, I promise. Uh, and of course, you can continue to interact and opine in the Facebook live chat. But the best thing to do, give us a call at 603-250-6007. Um, oh, by the way, too, uh, Stacey Lawton is in the chat room and says, I absolutely love the segment that's coming up next. This person you have on the show is simply amazing and a very smart individual. So, we we talking about you or... Me. No, you. Oh. She's talking about you. Well, God bless you. I appreciate the plug. Thank you very yes, much. And, yes. uh, I hope to entertain you as we go forward here in the weeks to come and today as well. Very good. I'm going to go ahead and hit the music here for Tweakonomics. Good evening, Manchester. My name is Mike Sutter, a quasi-qualified and very educated young man <laughs> uh, in the field of marketing, economics, and business. And um, I get the opportunity to not only do my um, music and chatting and stuff like that, but also kind of... Uh, Exercise my brain here as I go into my sunset years here. Sunsetting, <laughs> I think they call it. <laughs> oh, my God. Really? Is, is that how you, uh, wow. Well, I don't know. We, hey, Charlie Watts made it to 80. Yeah, I know. And, so you got some time. But does it does it not, like, remind you that, um, you know, this trip doesn't last forever and uh, there yep. is an end in sight? And Yes, it so does. God bless him. I'm just but, I, but I appreciate the uh, comment from the lady <laughs> in, the, in the chat room. I really, really yes. do. Um, the uh, the whole idea of uh, me being on radio here is to stimulate folks to call in and give a listen. So thank you very much. Um, so today's w- one thing I wanted to hit on is, um, you know how in the uh, lexicon of uh, the Webster Dictionary, um, like LOL is in the dictionary, right? Or things like that. You know, they're, they're, Is it? I don't know, but th- oh. phrases like that, are, like yeah. uh, millennial is in the dictionary. Oh, yeah. No um, doubt. Yeah. So there's a new phrase I heard today when I was... Uh, looking into some business things to try to entertain you all today, and it's called food deserts. Not desserts, ah, deserts. I've so heard like, this uh, term, yes. Yeah, the food deserts. And it, 
So to, to go forward, it, it looks like folks like the Dollar Tree and Dollar General are the folks causing these things called food deserts in places. Uh, the one article that I read and listened to some video on is uh, Gary, Indiana, and they're actually doing some zoning ordinances to try to keep dollar stores and dollar general stores, uh, dollar trees, forgive me, um, and dollar stores like that. I guess there's a couple of different versions of them out of certain urban areas because they undercut folks like uh, Walgreens and uh, CVS. I don't think CVS is in the Midwest like in Gary, Indiana, but in places like these. The reason why is uh, the dollar stores come in and they sell things like napkins, toilet paper, paper towels, and things like that at a cost that uh, your Walgreens, CVS, or what have you are not able to compete with, Like to be frank. They're just not able to compete with, uh, you know, we have a four-pack of toilet paper for $2 or you know, most of the stuff is a dollar, hence the name, the dollar store. Um, but they don't sell milk and they don't sell, that I'm aware of, they, they do sell frozen goods. I do remember seeing that in the dollar store because I am a customer. Um, but as people get squeezed here by inflation, it's really interesting. And I was really tickled by the idea that it's gone so far that local ordinances and constabularies or whoever make the laws in these places um, are saying, all right, we need to limit the amount of dollar stores here because the folks who really, um, I think, have, a, in their view, uh, offer a better um, experience or uh, custom to the, the, the folks who are buying things, um, the, I think they want the Walmarts, or, mm-hmm. excuse me, the, uh, the Walgreens and the CVSs and things like that. So a dollar store comes in and they start um, blowing things out at a very, very cheap price. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a good thing. I mean, if yeah. I need a dish towel or something like that, um, you know, I do use paper towels, but I'm a big fan of what uh, the English call tea towels. And I hang, oh. I hang them on everything in, in my kitchen. Uh, Fancy. You know? Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, fa- <laughs> it's, uh, it's just very darn convenient. Yeah. And, you know, I could go online and get a, um, you know, my local sports team tea towel, or I could go and get, uh, you know, my favorite college football team tea towel. But I can go to the dollar store and get a two pack of them for a dollar. Yeah. So, so they, they've got me sold in that direction. But um, it was interesting. I don't know if you've ever heard of the guy. His name's Stuart Farney, who's on Fox Business. And I don't want to get political here because I do listen to all things across the spectrum. Mm-hmm. But on uh, Fox Business in particular, uh, Stuart Varney, who's an English fellow, um, he was tickled, I think, and he was smiling while he made the report that it, there are food deserts. So that you've got lots of toilet paper and uh, plastic utensils and air fresheners and candles and things like that, but they are not, uh, you know, selling eggs and milk and things like that. So they came up with the term, somebody did, food deserts. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Well, I've also heard that term used, I think, to describe, uh, because I've I've been hearing that for a while, to describe areas where, regardless of of whether there's dollar stores there or not, just areas where there's, there's not enough grocery stores you know, um, so you have heard this. This is not yeah. like spanking new news to you. I've, yeah, I've I've heard the term too in the context of rural areas uh-huh. where where you have to um, more so out west. Yes, where you have to drive like you know an hour a- away from where you are mm-hmm. uh, just to to go to a grocery store, um, and that's you know part of why you know obviously over time we continue to see. Um, people moving into into the cities. Yes. Um, but, yeah, so I have heard that term before in a slightly different context. So that makes sense. This probably, the dollar store phenomenon, at least in these areas, is exacerbating the problem, if yeah. I can use that word, um, is making it worse to the point that, again, the, 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 the zoning uh, folks are saying, you know, we have to limit uh, the amount of dollar stores and dollar trees that are coming in, which, you know, uh, if you're a... Uh, capitalist type person like I am, uh, that seems counterintuitive. Like, yeah. wouldn't you want like nine dollar stores to, you know, they're paying taxes? I would guess to some right. level and right. employing people and all this other good stuff uh, in the capitalist direction. That um, th- they're making a, an effort to limit them. Um, but you know, we can. I, it just occurs to me now. You can look down to the long, far highway of there are probably people lobbying for this, you mm-hmm, know, mm-hmm. and probably of the course. folks from, from Walgreens and CVS and folks course. like this thing, yeah. you know, hey, I we can't sell toilet paper for $2, you know, we right. want $10 for toilet paper, so, and that's healthy competition, I get it, but uh, for, to have them limited uh, under this guise of food deserts, <laughs> I thought it was a little um, extraordinary and um, 
dramatic. Uh, there's some feedback in the Facebook live chat. John Monroe, uh, who says, hello from Connecticut, thanks to Charles Richardson. Uh, John says, the quality of items from the dollar store is not there. That's true, right? I mean, it's it's going to be, you know, you're not going to find uh, necessarily high-quality brand names. It's a lot of knockoff stuff, I would assume. Um, Dirk Don of Arrogant Media says, I absolutely hate the way dollar stores stick out like a sore thumb in any area that looks better without it. Aesthetically, they are awful. Yeah. Well, you know what's interesting about that is I saw, this was maybe a couple of years ago, there was a news story about how um, some of these chains like Family Dollar, Dollar Tree, etc., they they do look really dumpy. And that's part of the reason they get robbed. Those kinds of stores get robbed a lot. And um, I had not heard of that. Yeah, it's really common. And part of the reason, apparently, is uh, people who do these robberies are attracted to stores that look like they aren't kept up. So some of these chains, um, you know, and it's it's usually dollar store type chains. You'll see, you know, maybe the sign, half the sign doesn't light up. You know, you yes. can see the building is kind of falling apart. They got a parking lot with giant potholes in it. So it looks like it's not really well kept up. So from the point of view of someone who's going to commit an armed robbery, they're assuming, well, no one's going to stop me from robbing this dump. Sure. You know, they probably don't have a working camera system. It, you know, the, the place is falling apart. You know, the employees probably are paid minimum wage, so they're not going to try to stop me. So it makes them very vulnerable to robberies. I, I'd buy that. And then the signs probably says dollar store, not dollar store. Right, right, <laughs> Cause, yeah. Because the D's out. Exactly. But, but that, makes, that, that makes sense to me, and that's part of the beast, right? Um, you walk into your local 7-Eleven and, you know, I always notice this thing when you walk in or out, they've got the height measure yes. know, on the door. And I'm yes. like, all right, they mean business. So if I'm running out of here, they know I'm five ten and a half or whatever, Yeah, <laughs> yeah. which is a deterrent in itself. I'll be honest with any would-be robbers out there that I have a sign in my yard that says this area is under 24-hour surveillance. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I shouldn't say this, but I do not have a 24-hour video surveillance. I thought it would be cool to put a sign in the yard yeah. because I did have my car gone through one night. Uh, and they took all my change out of my car, but they left my four hundred dollar Maui Jim sunglasses. So really, they, they, they really did. Yeah, wow, <laughs> which were right there on the seat, but they took two dollars in change, and you know, which irked me. But I, <laughs> I had to say at the end of the night or at the end of the morning when I saw, I'm like, well, I got my Maui Jim sunglasses. That's <laughs> wow. <laughs> But they probably huh. weren't looking for sunglasses when right. they went through the car. They were right? looking for yeah. money. Yeah, yeah, they were probably wearing sunglasses and a bandana. Right. They probably needed, uh, just needed some cash for, you know, whatever. Yeah, so I thought I'd throw this sign out there. I, I went on to uh, Amazon and, you know, put a, on the back of a half of a hockey stick. I gorilla glued it, and it's in my yard as it speaks. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it's not a bad idea. No, but uh, so I, I buy the idea that, that your guest here in the chat room said that, uh, you know, they are they inviting it? You know, maybe so. Um, you, you can say that a lot about of areas in uh, Manchester here that we are so diverse, which is why I love the city. You know, the, the, there are areas where it looks, you know, um, an area where you might not want to commit a crime. And there are areas, and I don't want to point hands north, south, yeah, east, yeah. east or west here, yeah. that, you know, oh, well, this probably, you know, probably trouble happens after 10 o'clock at night. Um, yeah. So, so I agree with the comment. Um, I was in, it's, it's funny that you're talking about this just coincidentally, uh, a few days ago, I was in a, a kind of an urban area of Massachusetts driving through and I was, I swear to God, I was looking for a, uh, I was looking for a supermarket because I wanted to get, uh, I love these, uh, the, the are uh, yogurt bars that, uh, I can be starving and I eat one of those and it fills me up anyway. But you can only get them at like Shaw's and uh, Walmart. So I was looking for a place like that. But I was struck by, and I'd never noticed this before, how in a relatively small area on this road I was on, I was on Route 28, I think it was Route 28, how many of these family dollar stores I passed. Like, I, I, I had never noticed before, but I, as I'm driving and I'm seeing them, and I guess I was noticing them that day because I was looking for a store but just not that kind of store. And uh, I just was struck by, like, I'm thinking, how can there be so many of these within such a small area? They must be doing a booming business in this area so to they, have this many of them. Yeah, absolutely. And the um, 
you know, what what I started watching uh, this uh, TV show, new show that I was watching, is really for for stock tickers and stuff. Which again, I've I think I've said several times. I try to stay away from you know the Dow Jones Industrial is at blah blah blah. That that doesn't uh, not that important for other people to hear me say. Um, but indeed, the uh, it was Dollar General, I believe, ha- has taken a big jump. And, uh, you know, that's as an investor, if, if you want to talk about investing, that's a good thing to see that, yes, they cluster these things. You know, I don't know if uh, if you're a Manchester resident, you ever go out Mammoth Road towards the hospital, there is a Rite Aid, a CVS, and I believe they're building a new Rite Aid uh, to replace the old one. Um, you know, if you want to go to a Rite Aid here in Manchester proper, uh, you can go in five minutes in any direction. There's yeah. one this way, there's one this way, there's three three this way back on Mammoth Road. Yep. And it makes sense they're near a hospital to fill prescriptions and whatnot. But um the same thing is is clustering with the um <laughs> with the dollar stores. Yeah. Um and, and some folks at least in Gary, Indiana in the example that I mentioned uh, are not too happy about it. Yeah, yeah. By the way, apropos of nothing, I just uh a notification just popped up on my phone uh via the Facebook app that Crazy Joe has just gone live on his uh the Crazy Joe show Facebook page which means that his uh latest suspension has ended. So, oh, that's right, he was booted, was he not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so for you uh Crazy Joe uh followers, uh there you go. He's live right now. Well, I hope we don't split the audience. But... I I hope not. You know, he's always threatening to take all my fans. <laughs> which is odd because uh you can be a fan of both. Uh, I mean, uh, I think most of my fans probably are repulsed by him. But uh, but well, we, well, he's made a good effort in that direction. <laughs> yes, yes, he. Uh, what little I know. Yes, he certainly has. He certainly has. Um, okay, so there's so there's uh, people in power trying to keep these away. You know, I've heard I've heard similar things over the years with uh, like um, I forget where it was exactly. It was in Massachusetts. It might have been Cambridge. There was a place in Massachusetts, one of the cities. One of the suburbs of Boston, maybe it wasn't Cambridge. You might remember this, where they were trying to open a Walmart, and uh, the the city said, "No, we don't want a Walmart here." Mm-hmm. And um, and I think they ended up keeping Walmart out. Now, now was that for political reasons? Because Sam Walton was a leaning one political way or the other. Or they no. didn't, they they just didn't want the aesthetics zoning wise. I think they just didn't want the aesthetics, and uh-huh. uh, you know, and the counter argument to what you know the people who were trying to keep them out, people were saying, well, this is going to create a lot of jobs. Amen. Now that I'm thinking about it, I think it was in an area where you know it's a little bit uh, not economically strong, mm-hmm. and uh, and 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 it, some people were just kind of really just baffled by this. It's like, really, is Walmart that upsetting to you? Because it is going to create a lot of jobs, you uh-huh. know, and, and we need the jobs right now. This was a while ago. This might have been 10 years ago. This but... is why I think, I think it's important that people vote at the local level, the municipalities. Mm-hmm. Um, I know in Manchester we have uh, an alderman election coming up, um, also the mayoral election coming up, school board and all these other kind of things. But the city council and the, the aldermans at large, um, like we have here in Manchester, are really, really important in that direction because they're the folks who kind of vote on, you know, would we let a, a Walmart in here or would we not? Um, and, you know, their motivations may not be that, hey, I've got two, you know, teenage sons or daughters who could probably use a $17 an hour job at Walmart. Yeah. Uh, as, a, as a parent, you know, that's where my, my mind would lean. I can see myself also emotionally as we talk about economics in the emotional direction that, you know, if I was in my sunset years, which I know I said I was, um, and now I'm going to rescind that. Um, but, you know, I may not want to live next to a Walmart where there's going to be a big parking lot and, um, you know, a bunch of uh, employees running around. So I, I, I understand both sides of the argument or the equation, but uh, your your voice can be heard uh, if we want to go in a political direction here again to vote for your alderman, uh, vote for your ward, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, whatever we have here in Manchester. I'm up in Ward One, and I, you know, I, I've made my mind up, and and know most of the folks who are running. Um, but it's important to, rather than to complain about, uh, boy, this change is happening, or I don't want this to happen. For heaven's sakes, go out and vote uh, in the direction of the folks who are um, have like-minded opinions. Yours, um, Stacy Lawton in the chat room. She's from Nashua. She says. Uh, we've kept them out of Nashua. I'm not uh, not just because we don't like the look of the big box store, 
but because Walmart, the location they wanted to go in, there was a watershed and given them their, a what? Uh, I, th- I think she's using voice to text, but we'll try. Uh, and given their environmental record, we said no. Uh, the location they wanted was an old Building 19 in Nashua. I remember Building 19. And a half. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's right, which was an old grocery store at one time, and that area has environmental protection in the watershed area around it, and Walmart has a terrible environmental record at keeping the water around their stores safe. Um, and Rocky Uber says uh, they tried putting a Whole Foods in a poorer community, and the residents didn't want it because they were calling it gentrification of their neighborhood. It was a suburb of Boston. Hmm. Wow, yeah. I'm not familiar with the term gentrification. Enlighten me, please. Well, so it it's kind of taken on a different meaning. So gentrification, as I have understood it historically, is when, uh, you know, when you just uh, take a neighborhood and you kind of clean it up, you know, maybe you... Um, you know, you, you clean up the park, you fix them, some things, you make everything nicer. Okay. So, but... But it's it's taken on a little bit of a connotation. But so the the literal definition here is um, the process whereby the character of a poor urban area is changed by wealthier people moving in, improving housing and attracting new businesses, typically displacing current inhabitants in the process. So. The. um the second definition listed is, which, again, this was the definition as I understood it growing up, mm-hmm. the process of making uh, something more refined, polite, or respectable. Um, so, in other words, taking a taking a, a neighborhood, you know, maybe has some broken windows, maybe has some, so, you know, the, the park has some broken stuff, whatever, and you just make the neighborhood look better. But it's sort of taken on more the nuanced meaning of the first definition that I read and has seemingly in some instances caused resentment in communities where, you know, you've got people living in that community who it's a poorer community and they see wealthy people moving in and they're kind of going, well, what are they just here to push us out? Are they here to, you know, are they, are they taking over and, um, something that seems like it might be a good thing if it's going to improve the neighborhood to some people um, is uh, seen as a negative. Well, you and I have talked about uh, the the phrase that comes to mind is being priced out, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, You and I have talked about uh, depending on where you are as a homeowner or a renter, as things go up, you and I were talking about inflation a couple of weeks ago, that if the price of the home that you own or, you know, have a mortgage with and you have an end of the site that you're going to pay this mortgage off, the appreciation of your home is a good thing. Uh, if you're a person starting out or of, uh, you know, different means than somebody who can just throw a lot of money around, it's not a good thing. You know, when rents go from, you know, when I was a kid, they were $700 a month, which was a very long time ago. Um you know, the difference between $1,500 a month and $900 a month is very substantial if you're scratching out a living. Mm-hmm. So I, I understand that from that point, certainly, and, and and darn for sure as a homeowner, you know, as I see the inflation, uh, my, my perspective is, oh, this little uh, home that uh, I own here in the North End, if inflation pushes this up to a great point, I also have no other place to go. So I'm in no position to say, oh, I'll sell my home and make, make a bunch of money. Right. But the... Um, being priced out is a real deal. Urban renewal, I think, is what I would liken this race to. Oh, Am I right? Yes. Uh, back when I was a kid, they called it urban renewal. And, um, you know, but that that's a real economic dynamic. Um, I had friends who lived in Detroit and a guy who owned a business in downtown Detroit. And uh, it was a real struggle for him that the city, the city of Detroit in particular, was not keeping up with kind of the beautification and paving the streets and planting mm-hmm. trees and all this. And, um it eventually drove him out, and he ended up moving to Oklahoma City, <laughs> wow. of all places. But that had a different dynamic than, you know, uh, Detroit, uh, like the urban areas of Massachusetts that you may have mentioned, um, you know, they've got struggles, but it's also very important to keep prices reasonable um, for their uh, their locality and the people mm-hmm. who live there. And, you know, i got to tell you, a dollar store is not a bad way. Um, you know, I've, I've got two daughters who are not the richest women in the world uh, yet. They will be. Um <laughs> 
But, you know, gosh, if they need toilet paper, and the guy who mentioned in the chat room, they don't offer the best quality, that may be true. Uh, they do have the recycled toilet paper, <laughs> I think, if that's the thing. Uh, not recycled used toilet paper, but the, the toilet paper is made from recycled paper, and it may not be the most comfortable thing or the, the product of choice, uh, but the price point dictates that. Um, I found this uh, just uh, on uh, gentrification, um, kind of why people don't like it. It says uh, gentrification is a housing, economic, and health issue that affects a community's history and culture and reduces social capital. It often shifts a neighborhood's characteristics, for example, racial, ethnic composition, mm -hmm. and household income by adding new stores and resources in previously rundown neighborhoods. Well, that sounds like that's an, a, a positive explanation of it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, again, it's I, I I guess it's a, a matter of perspective, uh, as is uh, you know whether a, a dollar store is moving into your uh, into your area. Now, you, now your guest who mentioned um, that how they had tried to keep the Walmart out because of watershed and things like this. It reminds me of I used to work in Woburn, Massachusetts, in another lifetime. And there used to be a, a, a big conglomerate, I want to say it was a fertilizer or a chemical conglomerate, that they found out years afterwards that the chemicals were leaching into the water source. Um, and, you know, worst case, folks who are developing cancer, I think, was the, the big one with this one. And the darn name escapes me, and I'm sorry to not have done research on this. I'm going off the top of my head. But you know what? I, I, I would be on that side of the fence, certainly, if, mm. if I thought if a Walmart's going to come in and they've got a record of... Uh, letting stuff bleed into the water source, uh, and I've got a couple of kids or even just myself living in a one-room apartment, I want my drinking water to be clean. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Excuse me. Mm. Um, all right. Now, do you have anything uh, anything else on this uh, uh, uh Not on this topic. topic. Is... Let, let's go forward. Can we go to point number two? Because yeah. I know time oh. flies when we're here today. It, it does, absolutely. Um European uh, plane maker Airbus, uh, you guys may have heard of. Uh, they make the, um, what are they called, the A30s, the A20, uh, A321s and things like this to uh, rival our American uh, producers, Boeing and uh, folks like that. Um, they have actually sold a bunch of new planes to Delta, and I thought this was an economic indicator that Delta is buying planes. This is a good thing yeah. where the airline industry has taken a nosedive um, where we haven't been able to or, or wanted to fly here. Nosedive, good pun. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> pun not intended or, or not well thought out. Uh, I? <laughs> <laughs> How about tanked? Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah the nosedive is not. I, I, I'm going to have to work on this stuff. <laughs> Um, but what, what was interesting to me, and I thought was so I thought it was great that Delta, an American company based out of um, Atlanta, Georgia, I believe, um, was actually put in a big order for, you know, in a big order is 515 planes mm. um, to this European company, Airbus. And they're actually going to be assembled in Alabama. And uh, it may, I, I drive a Honda Civic that was actually assembled in Canada. And I always like when. You know, I came from a mindset growing up that buy American, right? Buy American. And I, I, yeah. do, I do believe in that when it's possible. Um, but you know what? Um, a lot of things, like this Airbus, I, when I hear Airbus, I think of the Europeans. Yeah. This is the European competitor to Boeing or, or what have you. Um, they ship the parts over. They're actually assembled in Alabama. And that, and that equates to, like, oh. pretty darn good jobs, I would imagine, to folks who assemble planes. Um, but, but what caught my fancy again was the... The fact that Delta is not, you know, year number two of the pandemic here holding off on orders. They're actually adding orders uh, to these planes, which um, I can't imagine what the price tag is on those. I can get back to you on that. Mm. But uh, that was pretty cool. So Delta's um, early next year, they're going to take delivery of uh, some up teen um, Airbus 321 Neos, they call them. Mm. thought that was pretty cool. Oh. And now it's time for our shameless marketing plug. Oh, yes. The SMP portion of our show where I try to bring on new sponsors if I'm able. Folks like um, AdoredWiFi.com, who we just heard a commercial from. The Hopknot, which is right across the street from me. And, yes, I will be there crooning for you on Friday. <laughs> uh, CGI Business Technologies and Queen City Cabinetry. Big shout out to Mike, who uh, liked a couple of pictures that I had put up oh. online the other day. He, to become kind of an online friend of mine, and I appreciate that. Good. Um, but I wanted to send a shout-out to the folks at Two Share Brewery, which is over on Union Street here in uh, Manchester. 
Um, I did have the opportunity to play there a couple of times. They are a tap house that do create their own beer. They have a couple of rotating beers um, that they bring in from other breweries. Um, Let's see, they are at 720 Union Street, and Aaron and his wife, Jenny, are frequent patrons over here at the Hop Knot, uh, which is how I met them. Um, But Mary, who runs the bar there, is very nice to me, and she's hired me a couple of times to play some music for them. Um, recently let me know they wanted something more compatible to their clientele, which oh. <laughs> it was very diplomatic of her. <laughs> but, yes, uh, yes. They probably don't want to hear the weird fish ween and uh, occasional strange Great Evil Dead song that I play, um, but she was very professional about it. But I would encourage you to go by there. They sell growlers full of beer. They've got a really dog, they have a dog-friendly place. Um, and um, I, I really support people like this. He, Aaron and his wife are really busting their tail over there to uh, create new beer and uh, get around the folks, uh, you know, the Budweiser and the Narragansett crowd, which I ran with for a long time. Yeah. So there's my SMP plug for the week. Oh, very nice. That's a big deal. Uh, these uh, uh, is it my is it a microbrewery? Is that the correct yeah, term? Yeah, yeah, it's a microbrewery. Yeah, they don't yeah. have big big production. You will see their beer. Their uh, Gold Civic IPA is available over at the Hop Knot. Um, they are in stores here locally, but you know they they probably are not across the Mississippi or past Massachusetts at this point. They they're yeah. they're a mom and pop for sure. It's amazing that uh, you know the, uh, I mean to see how far that industry has come with the microbreweries in the past decade plus, and and I know that uh, I think just recently Governor Sununu signed something new to make it even easier for them. I don't remember what it was. I don't follow it that closely, mm-hmm. uh, that specifically, but. Um, yeah, it's just amazing. I did see a, a really funny, uh, uh, I don't know if you like The Onion. I, I love The Onion, and I yes. saw The Onion had a something I'd shared out. This was a number of years ago. A uh, uh, man arrested by local police caught uh, making uh, or working at a brewery without a, a large beard. Or something. It was. It was. It, you'd have to see it. I, well, that's The Onion for you. It's funny. Yeah. I haven't seen them uh, pervasively online like I used to. But yeah. You know, years ago, they were the, and it took me uh, some amount of time to realize and a friend to tell me that, like, no, this is, they are, they're jerking your chain on purpose. Am I right? I mean, they, well, of course. they, they, they throw stuff out there that, like, yeah. at first sight, you're like, oh, my God, they fired him for not having a beard and a man bun? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, no, dude, they, 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 their job is done. They got your attention and you read yes. the article and it's not true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I love the onion. Um, we're almost out of time. Did you have anything quick that you wanted to add with, uh, with yeah, well, let me stir the pot real quick. My employer who I will not mention uh, as I have a couple of them, but one of them has just, uh, if you guys want to talk about vaccinations, get mad real quick before we get off the air. <laughs> um, this, uh, employer, um, introduced a, ma- a vax mandate yeah. October 18th. If you're not vaxxed, uh, see you later. Okay. Um, and I, I was kind of, I think we've all been waiting to kind of see this happen. That mm-hmm. I, You know, you hear about it on the TV and the radio about, um, uh, you know, city, municipality, city of Manchester, like to go into, or if you work for the city of Manchester, you have to be mm-hmm. vaccinated. And um, it, we had chatted about that. But in my own personal life here, I just got the memo on the uh, cork board when I walked into work. And, you know, a couple of people are like, yeah, October 18th is my last day or October 15th, oh. whatever. It's my last day. Wow, uh, you know, I'm going to have to go sell cars or park cars or go mm-hmm. wash dishes somewhere else. I I don't know, but um, it's coming to fruition, which I think is a good thing in the whole process of this disaster and this mess. Um, mm-hmm. to, to let's get through to the new normal, whatever the heck that's going to look like. Um, but I think uh, you guys out there in Radio Land will start to see that if you work for a private employer, again, mm-hmm. municipalities and stuff like that, it's been assumed and yeah you know if, if you work for the armed forces or something like that it's kind of a given um or a hospital something like this but in, in, in my little uh, employer here that i spend time with a couple of days a week uh there it was when we walked in and yep. uh you know they everybody was huddling in the uh over the water cooler saying yep i'm out of here man i'm not okay. doing it and they had been wearing masks the whole time while the rest of i said the rest of us i, I happen to be vaccinated for personal reasons um, and don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the, these folks um, have been wearing masks in lieu of being vaccinated, which, again, is the personal choice, and I'm all for that, man, 110%. And they saw the memo, and off they go, dude. Wow. They, you know, the 18th. And, you know, I maybe you can go to work for Amazon and, and make a dollar or two more an hour or, or what have you. I yeah. don't know. But um, 
it was uh, kind of a groundswell here for me to see this happen. That uh, all right, here we are. It's uh, yep, yep. at least we're progressing through it because um, I think anybody who listens to the radio or watches the TV, we're living with COVID. You know, we're not we're yeah. not going to eradicate it. We're going to live no. with it. And uh, whatever you have to do, it's um, I know this is deviating from economics a little bit, but um, I was. I, I was intrigued to see it. You know, I'm not surprised. Yeah. I'm not happy. I'm not saddened one way or the other. But we kind of knew the day was going to come, mm-hmm. and at least for my employer here, the day came today. And uh, yeah. it was interesting to see a, a couple of. Uh, I'm old enough to say younger people. Yeah, a couple of younger people are saying like, "Well, I, you know, I, I you know, I'll go work at the mall or whatever." Wow. But uh, yeah, but it might be interesting if you go to get that job at Olympia Sports, and they say, "Well, we'd love to have you, and here's our wage, but you have to be vaccinated." Yep. Yep. <laughs> We'll find out. Yeah. Well, you know, it's like I always say, hey, write a free association. If an employer wants to require it, that's... Uh, we are right. a free will state. And, yeah. You yeah. know, if you don't like it, you can go throw pots for a living or, you know, go work for Larry's Landscaping, who may not require it. So. That's true. Yeah. Well, with landscaping, you're outside. So, you know, it may not be an issue. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right, Mike Sutter. Th- thank you so much, my it's friend. It's my pleasure, brother. Always a pleasure. And uh, thank you to everybody who called today. And we'll try to get... Uh, John Hopwood here tomorrow. Oh, uh, Mike Pelopita says in the chat, uh, I always look forward to Mike's Freakonomics reports. Uh, I'm always a little bit smarter when he's on the show. Very nice. Very nice. Yes. Good to thunk. Very popular segment. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. All right, everybody, we're going to get out of here. Uh, if you miss any part of today's show, it will be up in just a little bit at WMNHradio.org and at my website, mattconnerton.com. Don't forget, tomorrow is Wednesday, so we'll have Dirk Don's newest album review. We always look forward to that. And uh, that's uh, that's going to do it. Rest in peace, uh, Charlie Watson. Uh, you, we'll leave you with a little more, uh, little more stones. Another uh, favorite of mine. She's so cold. We'll talk to you all a little bit later. Bye, Cheers. everybody.